So thank you, PhD Chamber of Commerce, for giving me this opportunity today to talk about um, how digitization is playing a big role in the supply chain. Um, this event is going to be very important to a lot of industries, a lot of verticals, because it's a stepping stone towards going back and saying how each and every different organization is working towards this common objective of digitization, which is not just our, our government's approach and an objective to achieve, but also to go back and say, what next? Um, things in the world or across the globe, they're always changing, right? And digital being one of the most abusive word, supply chain is not going to be very far for making the best use of it. Um, through this event, we're wanting to unearth on how can we go back and change the entire supply chain value chain and see how can we introduce um, things through artificial intelligence and algorithmic processes to bring it a different agenda all together towards the way logistics, transportation, and of course the whole industry is going to work towards it. Thank you. A lot has changed and will continue to change, right? Um, what we used to think as custom experience a few years ago, it has completely changed by definition, right? Uh, things are getting even and, more, even and more complex as we speak by the hour or by the minute. And by that, what do I mean? Um, the entire supply chain, the value chain of the supply chain has transformed, right? And why am I making such statements which means transformed or value chain has changed, etc.? cetera? Um, I'll give you very simple uh, um, statements that we have received or understood through working with various retailers. And when I'm saying various retailers, we are saying working with retailers across the globe. So it's not just India, it's also across the globe that we're understanding how the entire supply chain, the logistics has changed. Um, we got talking to Google, and when I was speaking with the Vice President Google, um, the lady mentioned very clearly three things that we're seeing as customers, right? Customers are getting more and more restless, which means that they're actually wanting everything at the snap of a finger. They want their product to be delivered the next second they've purchased, right? They want everything available at the doorstep or at their convenience. That's the first thing they saw. And the jump has been over 40% in that. So the restlessness was the area that we were trying to target. The second thing that we were seeing was the idea of searching, right? So besides searching for the product, and I heard a lot more about either we're searching and losing on the experience of walking into a physical store, but also searching for a product online and then expecting the delivery in the next few seconds is what's the next most um, different behavior that we're seeing today. Uh, it's not different or it's not new to us that it was, it's not the customers of tier one cities alone, it's the tier two cities and tier three cities who are more digitized today than what they were earlier, right? And as a result, that 70% jump in searches has not restricted themselves of only searching for the product, but also searching where has the product reached, right? Um, I've heard examples like Amazon's Flipkart of the world today, but one of the most important or challenging part of the role that they play today is the logistics part, right? We want to track even what, where it has reached, has it been shipped, has it been packaged, is it reached my local sourcing uh, uh, logistics team, where has it gone, right? And today if I have to go back and say, is it just the logistics player who, who are, um, Owning this market, I would be very wrong. It's actually retailers who've, who've actually removing all these lines. Today, Amazon's got their own logistics company, right? They've asked, so should I be calling Amazon as a retailer, as an e-commerce channel, or should I go back and say a logistics channel or a, or a supply chain channel is no, long, uh, no longer taking care of retail? So the lines have actually reduced or dimmed or almost diminishing. The other thing that we've realized, and whilst working again with a lot of, lot of customers, I mean, I'm talking about customers, for me, as TCS, uh, I'm talking about the Walmarts, the Amazons, uh, the Best Buys, the Home Depot, Chroma, Westside, Tata, Tata Group, right? All of us, we're wanting to go back and see um, the orders, right? When we're talking about B2C or a B2B, orders used to be those huge distribution centers, which has now become fulfillment centers, and now it's become order of eaches. Now, what does that order of eaches mean? 
is order of beaches is nothing else but i may like one product from one category and then another product from another category and another product from a third category all my categories are different right and as a result the amount of effort it takes for the organization to put all of them together package it for you and have it delivered to you in those fraction of seconds has absolutely taken the industry by storm and the reason i'm saying it's industry by storm is because it takes huge amount of effort time and efficiency and speed to get that reach to you in the fraction of minutes seconds or week because the minute i'm not able to deliver it to you on time i'm losing you as a customer you may see value in terms of being cost effective for the product cost but we've learned this morning that if it doesn't reach you on time you're never going to interact with me right the third complexity that it has created is is the digital world the physical and the digital world what does that mean i'm seeing a product either online i may just go into a store and then purchase it or i may see something in the store compare it with amazon or the other e-commerce giants and then see oh it's it's cheaper there but it may reach me tomorrow no i'm not okay with it can i be an amazon prime member and reach and this should reach me today i'm super happy right so the whole digital world has changed and as a result what we realized is we need algorithms to go back and process this amount of data this amount of behavior because it's almost impossible for an individual of a few data scientists to go back and process this amount of integrated view of data that we're looking at because we're looking at not just orders we're looking at behaviors we're looking at engagement we're looking at what is the cost of the product how much does it take from day 1 to day 10 for it to reach you i mean i'm just giving you a few nodes but there's so much more that goes behind the scenes and which is when we have actually introduced algorithmic supply chain right now what does that mean it means that we are going back and talking to retailers today to see algorithmic interventions that can play a very important role now a lot of us may come back and say or oh, what does this word sound or mean to us right um it may sound fancy but it's very simple to be gone back and processed with we're looking at three things we're looking at the first part is how much of the process that we're seeing through the value chain can be automated and when i'm saying automated it's not just looking at excel sheets and going back and putting a visual basic to that and saying oh i've automated my excel sheet and it's a tick in the box we're actually going back and seeing that which part of the process can be automated where i do not require an individual to go back and look at that okay the very clear defined steps and in the process of supply chain logistics and actually a lot of other processes that we work across this part can be done the second part to this algorithmic process is going back and saying intelligence so whilst i may go back and be able to automate the process i may be able to absorb a lot of data but what do i do if i'm not able to go back and see what are the actionables out of it what am i supposed to do with that data am i supposed to just keep looking at dashboards bar charts graphs i don't know what to do right so what is that pinpoint or that art of intelligence providing that i can go back and say hey you need to do this different in your system or in your process to make it intelligent enough and be able to do it themselves the third part of the whole process is going back and saying autonomous i love this word because that's the buzzword but the other part to that is it's it's very challenging to reach that level if today all of us want to go back and believe that we're going to be autonomously doing things it's absolutely not possible right what we need to realize is to what level of sophisticated behavior technologies engagement have we reached to reach that for example we have a lot of manless cars manless trains but how many of them have been able been able to implement it i mean even today if i go back and i say i do have a a manless car i don't know if any one of us are using that today here and why are we not been able to use it because we do generate a lot of platforms a lot of technologies a lot of art of possibility but what we fail to realize is the art of scalability the art of usability can i go back and deploy them across regions cities geographies people culture behaviors right so these were the three parts that we went and we looked at and realized that this is how the algorithmic process is going to happen 
And the first part of that process is an algo scan. We actually sit back with retailers today and go back and see which part of this process is broken or can be fixed or can be integrated amongst the three a part of it. We spoke about IoT, we spoke about facial recognition, we spoke about drones. Today, all of this is actually getting implemented as we speak, right? A lot of your smart warehouses actually have this. We've actually sold solutions where and this is where we are telling we're selling solutions, we're selling platforms, we're selling capabilities. And these capabilities is to various retailers and of course all the other verticals as well, to go back and say, how is it that we can enable things? So um, we heard this morning, right? It's very challenging to move from one, to pick up one product to another product in a distribution center. You'll almost take the entire day. Well, you know what? It's not just that. It takes about 170 paper transactions, paper jobs to finish one transaction. I was pretty surprised to go back and see this. We actually worked with the retailer and say, to finish a product end to end, right? From the time a customer's pick, you know, purchased it to the time the person's gone, gone to actually receive it, it takes us 170 papers to go back and actually process. And then we talk about deforestation, we talk about carbon footprint, but we realize that a supply chain is actually playing a very, very important role. And we could have actually completely processed this in a very different level. The second part that really came to play was in terms of the entire operating model, right? Um, supply chain is heavily into operating model in terms of saying the supply chain operating tower. It's called as a SCOT, right? But today, because everything needs to be visible, we actually have a command center for it. So right from the time the package is not just packed in parcels to the time it's actually being shipped to the time it's about to reach your door, every inch, second, millisecond is monitored. For example, today, when we spoke about onions this morning, right? So uh, I won't get into that controversy, uh, but I'll definitely go back and say the freshness of the vegetables and fruits that we're looking at. Um, I'm from Mumbai, and I'll be very honest in saying that um, people in Delhi or North India enjoy the luxury of freshness of fruits and vegetables that we don't get there, right? We're always cribbing. The quality of food is better here, whereas the quality of food is not so good there. But imagine if I'm able to track that if I had to ship bananas or strawberries or oranges from the time it's shipped from Delhi to Mumbai or whichever state in the country, and I'm able to manage the temperature and control it in my logistics and go back and say, hey, because of a three, day de three hour delay, the freshness percentage is reduced by 2%. And as a result, I should be able to change my pricing the minute it reaches a big bazaar. That's the kind of innovation we're talking about. And that's what we're implementing. Um, eventually, yes, it's going to reach all the retail stores because you'll see how the entire globe's transforming. But that's the thoughts that we had today. Um, and I thought it was an opportunity for all of you all to learn that how things are changing in this retail industry through supply chain. Thank you.